This is Tanks Vlog, brought to you by Allow Me To Be Frank, the weekly podcast you can hear on SoundCloud and iTunes. We'll be back with new episodes very soon. But you can listen to any great episodes of the past by going to SoundCloud and iTunes and looking it up Allow Me To Be Frank. Now, we look at Saturday NFL games. This is the penultimate week in the NFL season, and every playoff spot is just about to be nailed down. We have divisions up for the grabs. We have wildcard spots up for grabs. And there are two very important games. In the first game, it was the Titans and Redskins. Both need work and help to make the playoffs. And the Redskins, they had their chances to win this game. As the Titans were flat most of the game, they lost Marcus Mariota to an elbow injury. But in the end, you're just not going to win any games with Josh Johnson as your quarterback. And the uh, Titans outscored the Redskins 16-3 in the final quarter, getting a big pick six to make the uh, score look a little bit bigger than it was. But that was a very close game as the Titans beat the Redskins 25-6. to In the nightcap, it was the Chargers looking to keep the pressure on the Chiefs while the Ravens needed to win to keep pace with the Titans and to keep pressure on the Steelers. Now, what you had in that game was an absolute dominating defensive effort by the Ravens as Philip Crimea Rivers. Every time he gets sacked, there's a penalty. Every time he throws an interception, why did you throw that ball? I mean, it's it's the same old Philip Rivers. When the chips are down, he starts stomping his feet, and the Chargers choke. I mean, it's a, it Chargers and choke. It's just natural. It's it's beginning to look a lot like the playoffs. The Chargers are imploding. Philip Rivers is crying. The Chargers are losing. And soon they'll be going home again. And at times it looked like the Chargers kind of got screwed by the refs. Because to me it looks like Antonio Gates' knee were down. But I think they were just so tired of Philip Rivers convetching and whining and moaning that they said, oh, just give him the... The uh, fumble recovery and the Ravens got the win. And now, pressure. 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 Pressure is on the Pittsburgh Steelers. They got to win in the Superdome in New Orleans. Otherwise, they will not only lose first place, they will lose playoff seating. In other words, if the Steelers don't win tomorrow in New Orleans, the Saints... The team that if the Saints win, they're home for the postseason. The Saints just need to win one of the last two games to clinch home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs. So the next Saint road game will be the Super Bowl. Because they have to play their last two games at home. If they win just one of those games, they're the one seed in the NFC. And that's the odds Pittsburgh faces. So... Good job beating the Patriots last last week. You still have work to do. That's what happens when you lose three games. And it's been drama all year in Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell's holdout. uh, The Pittsburgh Steelers look like a team on the verge of imploding still, even with that win last week. So, this could be trouble. Pittsburgh, could you imagine the Pittsburgh Steelers not making the playoffs with all that talent with Antonio Brown? Something tells me there's going to be change in Pittsburgh. And it should be at that coach. There were four college bowls on Saturday. The first one, of course, was the Jared Birmingham Bowl. I don't know who Jared Birmingham is. Oh, Harry got a bowl. But it was a close, exciting game. Memphis, once again, Memphis, just like they did in the American Conference Championship game, had a big lead at the half and just went. <laughs> and then they had a chance to tie the game at the end and missed the game tying field goal. Of course, in the Lockheed Martin on Forces Bowl, it was all Army all the time. As it looked like, it reminded me of when the United States went into Grenada. It was just rolling all over Houston. I mean, poor Houston. 70-14, to 14. that's the most points ever scored in a bowl game. 
They the Army had 502 yards on the ground. On the ground, 502 yards. I mean, Kelvin Hopkins, 170 yards rushing, five touchdowns. I mean, if they played another 10 minutes, Army probably would have scored another 20 points at this rate. Whew. Then we got the Dollar General Bowl, where the uh, Troy, who was nearby in Mobile, Alabama, scored 21 points in the fourth quarter to beat Buffalo 42-32 to as they win the $1 trophy. And we got Louis, uh, Louisiana Tech as we go to uh, record trouncing Hawaii in the Hawaii Bowl. 24-17, they've, 24-7, they've just scored 21 points in the third quarter as Hawaii's offense just can't get going. Too many penalties. I mean, every time Hawaii gets a play, it's like there's a, a flag on the play. Let's go to NHL, where it was the Maple Leafs beating up the Rangers 5-3. The Bruins beat the Predators 5-2. Patrice Bergeron scored twice, coming back from the injured list. It was the Blue Jackets 4-3 winners over the Flyers. The Panthers edged the Red Wings 2-1. The Blues over the Flames 3-1. It was the Canadian winning in overtime 4-3 over the Vegas Golden Knights. Ilya Kovalchuk returned from the injured list and scored a game-winning goal in overtime as the Kings beat the Sharks 3-2. It was the Sabres 3-0 over the Ducks. The Capitals shut out the Senators 4-0. It was the Penguins beating the Hurricanes 3-0 as the uh, Hurricanes honored their past wearing the Hartford Whalers jersey. No brass bonanza there. That just feels wrong. I mean, they ripped that team out of the heart of Hartford. Now, don't get me wrong. Hartford, I don't think, is a big league town anymore. But it's almost like, oof. It was... The Arizona Coyotes, 6-4 winners over the Avalanche. The Stars beat the Wild, 2-1. It was the Lightning doubling up the Oilers, 6-3. And the Jets beat the Canucks, 1-0. In NBA action, the Clippers down the Nuggets, 132-111. It was the Wizards in triple overtime beating the Phoenix Suns, 149-146. to As Bradley Beal scored 40 points with 11 rebounds and 15 assists. It was the 76ers beating the uh, Raptors. Raptors suddenly struggling now, and the 76ers are making hay at trying to get that first place in the East. Ben Simmons had 26 points, 12 rebounds, and 8 assists. It was the Heat beating the Bucks, 94-87. to uh, senior citizens always seem to play good on uh, Saturday night, so that's why the Heat are always a little bit better. I mean, you know, you got those old people down in Miami. You got the old team in Miami. Uh, I mean, the Miami Heat's logo this year should be a walker and a cane. We got the Rockets downing the Spurs, 108-101. to James Harden, 39 points, 10 assists. It was the Warriors slipping past the Mavericks, 120-116. to And the Thunder edging the Jazz 107-106 as Paul George had 43 points, 14 rebounds, and 6 assists. Today's three stars are Calvin Hopkins of Army, who had 170 yards on the ground as part of Army's 70-14 to absolute annihilation of Houston. Laurent Borsett of the Jets, who had a 40-save shutout. Paul George of the Thunder, who had 43 points, 14 rebounds, and 6 assists. Today's birthday shout-out goes to a Heisman Trophy winner from Notre Dame and a Green Bay Packer legend, Paul Horning, who turns 83. And we take a look back to 1982 when Chaminade upset Virginia. Now, Chaminade was an NAIA school, which is even less than Division Three, And Virginia was number one, number one in the nation at that time. And they had Ralph Sampson, and they lost to Chaminade. Chaminade. So check out the full story at Barstool Sports and Sports Encyclopedia, where sports history lives. And don't forget to listen to Allow Me to Be Frank on SoundCloud and iTunes. 
good day.